Well, good morning there, Deacon Ray here. It is Wednesday morning as this is being uh, brought up and uh, videotaped for today and recorded. Uh, it's uh, Wednesday. It's supposed to be a little bit stormy out there this morning. The roads weren't too bad. That's a quick uh, update on the weather there. But uh, the heavy stuff's coming later on today, they say there. So good morning, Karen and Sharon. Good to see you. And uh, all the others that are joining us, uh, glad to have you along for this. So we're going to be looking at John 9 verses 1 through 11, and uh, as you can see, this is a little bit of a different setting we had before. Before I had the crowds all around Jesus, I still have them around there because there's still some people traveling with them, but this is going to be looking at uh, a very huge event uh, in, in the life of the man that was born blind for sure, and uh, certainly in the life of the disciples as well too, right? Good morning, Renee and Dee Dee and Fred. Good to have you here. hope you guys are all doing well this morning. So, uh, we're going to jump in after we have a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of sight that you've given to so many of us. But Father, many people in this world walk blind spiritually. We pray that you'd open up their eyes, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they would see Christ for who he is as their Lord and their Savior, the Redeemer who has come, that they may have life eternal, the forgiveness of sins, and a relationship with you. May these things be so in Jesus' name. Amen. And so again, I'm going to be using the ESV version of the Bible. I'm going to be looking at John 9, verses 1 through 11. And uh, our reading is as this. As he passed by, he saw a man born blind. Uh, 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 he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, no, but he looks like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. So far, the word of our Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful event this must have been for that man who was born blind, right? To, to see for once, right? And not only to see, but, but to see then the face of Jesus later on, right? The one who had made him well again. And there's also something else here, too. There is a spiritual awakening within this man, too. There was a faith in him because he went and washed trusting that the person who said do this was able to give him his sight back. There's also some other things I'd like to talk about in there. And of course, that starts out with uh, as Jesus passed by, right? He stopped and he helped. And what about us in our daily life as, as we go through our events of the day? Uh, something comes up and all of a sudden we're presented with an opportunity to help somebody. But how many times do we really stop or do we go, well, I'm, I'm on my way to this or on my way to that? And I can't get involved. Well, Jesus took the time to get involved. And I think there's more times that we can stop and we can put our schedule on hold, right, to attend to the events that God puts in front of us. Uh, now, there are certainly times when we have to keep on going, right, that we have to trust that God is sending somebody else to do that. But in the meantime, how many times do we deprive ourselves even of a blessing from God, okay, as we stay uh, in his will as we uh, become a blessing to somebody else, even if it's uncomfortable for us, even if we wrestle with whether we should have stopped or not. 
Uh, I often think about a pastor who's on his way to a church uh, function. He's got to be there. He's expected to be there. And he sees somebody that uh, has maybe got a flat tire. Does he stop or does he just keep on going? Right. It's one of those things. Right. But uh, and I don't think there's a clear cut answer. But I just put before you today. Are there some things that you can do? Right. Some things in ways that you can be a blessing, even in the midst of a very busy, busy day. And the other thing is the question. Think about that question. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Uh, you know, at first reading, that may not seem like that big of a deal, but man, there's a lot of arrogance in there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wanting to know uh, information that is absolutely of zero help to anything in life. Why that person was in that shape, whether it was his sin or somebody else's sin, is really immaterial to anybody there. And it's almost like, well, at least we're not that bad, right? You can imagine the disciples having kind of that, oh, boy, look at that guy over there. What a mess he must be, or his parents, right? And, and again, he grew up in a culture where that was common. We know that when uh, women were barren, that they, they, they were thought to be cursed by God, that there was a sin that either the woman did or the maybe the husband did or something like that, uh, or maybe in the lives of their parents, because that, that, you know, the concept, and God tells us that to the third and fourth generation, right, that these things do come down the line. But even if that's the case, there's no room for us to gloat over it. There's no room for us to try to pry into and see what kind of sin uh, might have been involved that caused this person to be born blind. Really, there's a sense of compassion for them. There's a sense of loving them and caring about them. But also this man, as he went through all this time of struggling, right? And maybe he himself goes, well, look, I'm sure I didn't do anything while I was in the womb. I was born blind. Must have been my parents. And you kind of wonder if maybe there wasn't a little bit of a, a disruption in their relationship with one another. And maybe even the parents kind of had that same thing. And each one going, well, I'm pretty sure I didn't do anything. It must have been the other one. And we see where that kind of thinking can really destroy relationships. And so we do well not to inquire as to why somebody's going through something. It doesn't matter. Even if it is their fault, they're going through something. You know, and we can have compassion for them. We can have empathy for them. We can certainly pray for them and love them and care about them. And I think that's the thing we want to draw from that part right there. Right, that we become that kind of a person who's not in, interested in, in how something happened or why something happened. As I often say, when we discover the reason of why that in 25 cents won't get you a cup of coffee at McDonald's, I mean, the information is of no value, right? What can we do to help them? What can we do to support them and to assist them? Because we're all sinful people and all of us need God's grace and his mercy. And uh, just going to leave it at that for, for the moment. And, and so we pick it up there. It was not this man uh, sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Right. And what a wonderful thing. I bet that must have perked that guy right up right there. I bet that must have lifted a weight off his shoulders. He, I, internally, he must have been rejoicing. And again, you and me, right? Do we see that sometimes the things that happen in our life are not a form of punishment, but that it allows God to work through those circumstances to show his glory, right? And to bring blessings to you and to me and to those around us, right? The events of life, okay? They don't have to be a punishment. They don't have to be, a, you know, a comeuppance or anything like that. It can simply be the Lord setting the stage for a great, blessing that he's going to bring in the life as he did of this person that was born blind. I mean, think about it. I mean, all your life, you're, you're struggling with all of these issues. Was it my fault? My parents' fault? Uh, you know, the, uh, the people treating him with, dis with disrespect, right? Seeing him almost as a leper. And then in that one moment, he hears and discovers that he was born blind so that the name of God could be praised. And uh, maybe you've had those moments in your life too, when you've gone through a hard struggle and, and you've wondered, you know, what's going on? And then it's almost like, boom, it's over. You're, you're through it. And, and you look back and you can see how God interacted and, and brought certain things to be. Well, what a blessing that is. And again, it takes this person's faith too, right? And again, Jesus didn't ask him, do you want to see? That's almost a given, isn't it? 
right? The man that was uh, paralyzed or was, was at the pool of Siloam for all those years, you know, his chief complaint, nobody there to take me and put me in. Well, I got a new set of friends in those circumstances. Get me closer to the water. And he never answered the question, do you want to be well? But I'm pretty sure that in this guy's case here, the answer would have been a solid, Lord, please give me my sight that I may see. And, and of course, we know what happens, right? The mud, right? And I wonder about that, too. Think about it for a second. In all of creation, right? God created everything. And we don't know that even, because it says, even the, the rocks would, would shout with praise on Palm Sunday, right? As Jesus is riding in. And, and the Pharisees want them to, 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 wants Jesus to silence the crowd. He said, these rocks would cry out if these people weren't. I wonder if that mud that was there, I wonder if it was rejoicing that the Lord that created it now used some of his spit and created mud that could be put over this person's eyes. And of course, as he goes, right, and, and he's going as a blind man, he's going there, but he's got faith something great is going to happen. And he goes and he washes his eyes. And for the first time in his life, he can see. How awesome that must have been, you know. And of course, it was probably a little frightening at first, too, right? Because all of a sudden, this, these things are happening. It's kind of like coming out of a, a movie theater. If you've gone in and, in broad daylight, bright sunshine, right? And you come out and, and that light hits your eyes and it's just so hard to see, right? But it's still a wonderful thing, especially for him in those circumstances. And this is where I want to stop for just a moment. And, and this is something that I say about myself, that I want to be the mud that is washed away that reveals Christ to those around me. When I'm interacting with people, whether it's in a nursing home, in the jail, here at church, wherever I am, wherever I have that opportunity to, to be Christ to those that are there, I want to literally be nothing. I, that's what I want to be. I want to be the mud that is going to be washed away so that when that person sees, they see only Christ. They see the great love that Jesus has for them. They have that strong, wonderful faith right? To be the mud. And, you know, John said of himself, John the Baptist, he said, I must become less while he becomes greater. And I think that's that same attitude that he had, right? That he wanted to become less and less and less and less. And all he wanted was for the people to see Jesus Christ, right? As Lord and Savior. You know, and, and again, he goes back, right? And, and he says, he goes and does what he's supposed to, and he sees, right? He sees, and the neighbors, uh, now they start to get a little bit of a, a discussion. Is this really that person that was born blind, or is it somebody that just looks like him? And, and so a little bit of a debate, but this guy puts it to rest. No, I'm him. I am the man. I was born blind, and Jesus healed me. And you and I, when we came into this world, we came into this world blind, dead, and enemies of God. And yet God washed that blindness away through the waters of baptism. Or if we came to faith later on, as the gospel message was planted inside of us and God caused it to grow. And that blindness went away and we could see Jesus for who he is. Our God has blessed us with so much and brings so much to us that we should rejoice and, and give thanks, even in the midst of harsh and difficult circumstances, because we have a God who loves us and will bring us through these things. And kind of in closing, uh, one of the questions I will ask of people, because I'll say, how far will God ask you to go in serving him? Well, you know, with Joseph in the Old Testament, he asked him to go into slavery, serve him faithfully there, and then end up in prison so that the glory of God could be revealed as Joseph ascends to the second most powerful position in the world at that time, which was Egypt. And in all of that, the, the, the millions of lives that were saved from starvation when that terrible famine came. Or what about Mary? As she grew up in a time when you know unfaithfulness uh, could cause you to be stoned to death. And yet she trusted the Lord. And through that gave birth to Christ. And this person here, born blind, that the glory of God could be revealed in him. You know, God asks us to go a long way sometimes. He asks us to follow a very hard path. 
but he promises to be with us, to bring us through it and to deliver us, bringing us out of our circumstances so that his name is glorified. And we are with him for eternity because of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done for us. Well, I thank you for joining me today. And I know we're supposed to get a lot of snow later on today. So uh, just take care out there. And when that weather gets here, if it gets here, we know how it goes. And I won't say anything about the weather guessers. I'll leave that alone for right now. But uh, anyway, God's blessings to you. Thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful day in serving the Lord. And uh, Merry Christmas and happy continued Advent journey to the manger. God's peace be with you.